Hey guys, well here is the GTEC A10. I received this a week ago and while this is not a full review, I did want to give you some of my initial thoughts because I can tell you that it hasn't been a very fun ride so far. I'll tell you more in just a second. Hey guys, it's Paul and welcome back to where nerdy is cool. This is my humble little spot on the internet where I post all my videos about all the stuff I find nerdy and cool. 3D printing, stormtroopers, Batman, you name it, you guys have all seen it all. If you are not already a subscriber, if this is your first time here, hello, welcome and please consider becoming a subscriber. If you are already a subscriber and a regular over here, welcome back, good to see you. So, as I mentioned, I recently acquired a GTEC A10, and let me give you a little bit of the backstory here. Um, I did buy this with my money. I had made contact with GTEC, uh, one of their uh, staff, and uh, I had said, look, I would love to get one of these. Do you offer any kind of a price break? I'd love to do a review on this for my little channel. And uh, they did give me $20 off, and uh, they put me in touch with someone to get it. And I guess this maybe should have been the uh, first clue that things were going to be uh, problematic. The one that I thought we had ordered had Wi-Fi and a touch screen. And as you can see, what showed up over here has a big old knob and a, and a uh, four line LCD screen. So that's what I got. Uh, it came from a US warehouse, so it showed up fairly quickly. And I did a live stream. You may or may not have seen that. That's out here as well. And I got it put together. Uh, a couple things about the build I want to point out. Um, putting it together wasn't too terrible. There was a few things that were uh, uh, difficult and there were a couple of things that were just plain out missing from the manual whatsoever. Uh, first thing I have to say is putting the ribbon cable. First of all, having that ribbon cable go from the control board, all that open area, uh, to the LCD screen, not a good design choice in my opinion. Uh, the instructions didn't mention this, but when you plug in that tiny little ribbon cable to the back of the LCD screen, there is a flap that locks it in place. Otherwise, you sit there, keep on <laughs> pressing, pressing, and pressing, waiting for something to happen, uh, and it never does. The other thing is, when you're going through the instructions, there is a piece back here, which, like most printers, is a Z-Guide. Uh, basically, it's a little plastic piece with a, a bearing in the middle that basically keeps the Z-screw uh, steady. And uh, that was in the box, and I kind of wondered, what am I doing with this? And uh, it wasn't mentioned in the guide, and then obviously, when I looked at other pictures online, uh, that's where it went. So that was kind of missing. The other thing is, on the back of the printer right here, you can see there's some nice covers here that cover the, uh, the extruded aluminum. Um, the one on the back, the minute I took this out of the box, it came off. Kind of a, well, that's, that's kind of too bad. Um, Although there are a couple cool things, I mean, I do, I do like the way this filament sensor works. I'm not a big proponent of filament sensors, but I did like that once you kind of screwed this in, this does a good job of routing filament uh, from here uh, into the extruder, and it does keep it away from the, uh, uh, the Z-screw, so I, I do like that. But uh, uh, getting it together, it wasn't too bad. I noticed the Y uh, seemed kind of loose. The belt seems kind of uh, not very tight to me. And uh, the way that this printer is set up to adjust it, it seems like it's at the very edge of what you can adjust it to. So, you know, a couple of things there. So anyway, we got it together uh, with all those little issues and uh, there was a, a G code on the uh, SD card already for a dog. So we gave that a print and I got the dog here. And the first thing I noticed is that there was a bulge in the print. Uh, about an eighth of an inch up, uh, I noticed there was a bulge. So, <clears throat> Okay, fine, whatever. And then I went through the process of, of going through and getting hold of a profile for the GTEC A10 and did a couple other test prints and that bulge exists there as well too. So for the life of me, I don't know what's causing it. I've been looking at the Z-screw. I've been looking at the way that these wheels are attached to the, uh, the V-slots. I don't know what's doing it. So the other thing that is a huge pain in the rear end is on the controller, when you're using the button and the you know to rotate around to go to the menus, that thing takes about six turns to move one item in the menu. So you're just cranking, cranking, cranking away. I wanted to preheat the bed and I wanted to preheat the nozzle to put some filament through. And I can tell you spinning and spinning and spinning to 60 degrees Celsius was just super annoying. Did not enjoy that one bit. It was mentioned to me that there was some other firmware that I could put on the printer. I was thinking the unified firmware that TH3D has. 
Uh, also, GTEC has a newer version of the firmware that might fix this. Uh, so they had suggested, hey, you know, connect to the pr printer and update the firmware. Well, as you guys know, I've been doing this for a while. I've been doing 3D printing since 2013. I, I have never had any issues connecting to my printers. Uh, I use Simplify 3D. I wanted to go in there and use the jaw controls to, to move things around. Wouldn't connect. Uh, I tried uh, Arduino. I tried, uh, I tried Proterface. I tried Repetier Host. I tried a different laptop. I made sure I had the USB drivers that you know this thing uses, uh, the 340. Nope, wouldn't do it whatsoever. So it looks like I have a bad board. Now here is where the tale gets somewhat <laughs> more laborious. So obviously I was invited to the GTEC forum uh, on their Facebook group rather, and I had been seeing a lot of people getting some really good quality answers from the GTEC staff when they were having issues. And when I mentioned I was having issues connecting, I initially got some pretty good support. Uh, the person that initially had got me into the GTEC line uh, had tagged some other people. And uh, next thing I knew, I was getting a couple pointers, but all those things I'd already tried. So long story short is I've gone through via their YouTube, uh, sorry, via their uh, Facebook support, and I'll get a few answers and then they drop away. And then someone else you know, shows up and starts asking me questions and offers to help whatever from GTEC. The one thing that really strikes me as weird about this is I keep on getting Facebook friend requests from various people at GTEC that either want to help or make contact or do something. And I just find that really weird because you can message me on Facebook without being a friend. You don't need to see my profile. You don't need to see my picture galleries. Not that you're going to see a whole lot besides 3D prints, R2D2, and a pile of cat pictures, but it's still kind of unnecessary to me. So. We had problems with the prints and I was having problems getting people to listen to me and that's kind of where I'm still at right now. I've kind of gone back to the first person I made contact with saying, look, I've talked to three different staff members. They initially are very helpful and then they vanish. I've only had the printer a week. I'm getting lousy prints and I really think, you know, a printer out of the box should be at least printing the, you know, the default stuff pretty well. And I'm pretty savvy with 3D printing, but I just call me crazy, but you know, if I spent two hundred dollars for this thing, you know, I want this thing to work out of the box, and I'm, I'm just not getting that kind of response from GTEC. GTEC keeps on saying, "Well, we'll send you parts." Uh, so apparently, as of yesterday, they are sending me the wireless and the touchscreen for this printer uh, and a new mainboard. I don't. Okay, so in what you spent in parts and shipping, you could have sent a replacement printer, probably. It wouldn't be a whole lot more. So that's my frustration, and let me, let me share with you why. Because my background, all, most of my life I've worked in customer service, whether as a software, you know, doing customer tech support, or in sales. I did commission sales uh, for Sears back in the day. So I'm all about making the customer happy. And in this case, they're just trying to make the customer more infuriated. I mean, it, I'm sorry, am I crazy to want a printer to work out of the box properly? I mean, I can't even connect to the, the, the firmware on this thing. So. So that's where we're at right now. So my, again, this is not a review. This is my initial thoughts. And my initial thoughts right now is this thing is not worth it. Um, I'm having a terrible time with it. Um, I'm expecting a box of parts in a week and apparently I have to repair the printer uh, to make it work right. And I, I just don't think that's a cool way to do business. Uh, I would think that if a printer is not working for a customer, especially a guy that's going to do a review on it, you know, I'm not saying I have the, the push or power of the bigger channels, but hey, I'm just a regular customer and I just want something that works. Call me crazy, right? So that's where we're at right now. We're waiting for, for the parts to show up and I'll have to tear this apart and do a bunch of repair work and find out what's going on. And I, I just don't think that's the way it should be done. So that's where we're at with it. Now the reason I say this, this is not a review, this is my first initial thoughts. Again, I've had the thing a week and I was hoping by now I'd have some pretty decent prints with it, but that hasn't happened. And the other reason I mention is of course we're coming to the Christmas season, we're coming up on Black Friday, and I'm sure all these manufacturers are going to have big giant discounts and sales. And I'm not saying don't buy one, I'm just saying hey, I bought one, here's the support I'm getting, I'm not really impressed. And I'm one of those guys that tries really hard to see the positives and not be negative. So, you know, caveat emperor, buyer beware. So that's, that's my initial take on this printer. If you guys have a different experience or if you have a similar experience, let me know in the comment section down below. 
And with that, I'm gonna wrap this up. I'm sorry it's such a short video, but I wanted to get something out real quick and share my experience with you. As you guys know, you can find me on Facebook, where Nerdy is Cool, on Instagram, and of course my website, where Nerdy is Cool.com. If you want to support me, you can do so through Patreon. Uh, I have my own Patreon page, patreon.com forward slash where Nerdy is Cool. And on the YouTube homepage, there's a link up there. If you want to throw me a couple bucks with PayPal, I'm good with that too. So, sorry I haven't done a lot of videos lately, but I'm going to get back on that train, and uh, I hope you enjoyed this one, and until next time, this is where Nerdy is Cool.